Hello, everybody, and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. I wanted to come to you today and talk to you a little bit about uh, importing 3D objects and then manipulating them in Aspire. So let's go ahead and create a new file. It'll be 20 inches by 20 inches. We'll make it an inch and a quarter thick. XY datum lower left again working in inches and we'll work at a very high resolution and our appearance will be MDF and we'll click OK. And so now I have my workspace and I want to bring in my model. And so I'm going to go to the modeling tab and I'm going to import a component or 3D model and go to my desktop and bring in this Boeing P12 that a friend of mine sent me and I want to talk about a couple of things as it relates to this model now if you look at the model and you look in the model size box it says that the Z height of the model or the thickness of the model is 5.6 inches the X is 20 and the Y is 8 working in inches and then down here it shows where the model is in relationship to your material. So let's first center the model, which puts the model in the center of our workpiece. And then as I move this slider up and down, anything that you see in gray will not come over. And anything that you see in the green color will. And so I always push this all the way down to the bottom so that I get the full uh, scale, thickness, height of the model. And then you can adjust it in here, but if you've got X, Y, and Z ratio locked, then it's going to change everything. For example, if I decide that I only want this to be 0.75 thick, and I click apply it's gonna turn the model into a three inch by one inch model and this has a lot to do with when wherever or whoever you got the model from how they created the model in the modeling software that they used so we're gonna go ahead and go back to 5.8 inches and we are going to center the model sorry 5.8 inches click apply and then we are going to center the model and then again we are going to bring all of the data all the way up to the top of our material and then we're going to click OK and so when the model comes in now you can see it because it was 22 by whatever it is you can see here that uh, because our piece is only 20 it cut it off here but the data is still there and it cut this right rear wing off too so if I come back over to my material setup and let's go ahead and make this 24 wide and then we don't need all 20 inches here, so we'll make that 12. Let's go ahead and go 16. And click OK. And then we can come over here and highlight our model. Click our align to center. And now we have our model in the center of our material. But as you can see, as I tilt this up, our material is an inch and a quarter thick and our model is about almost six inches tall so when I go over here to cut out my model and I go to the set under material setup you're going to get an error message here because your model thickness is 5.7 inches but your material thickness is only an inch and a quarter so we've got some work to do with this. Now, in this particular model, we've also got perspective, right? Because as you can see here, if I turn the airplane like this, we've got some perspective that 
the front of these wing tips essentially are higher than the back. And then on the tail, this left rear tail fin is sticking out more than this so that you get the perspective of the 3D model. So we've got to do a couple of things here. We're going to use the scale model height and we're going to use the tilt and fade options. And so we'll come back over here to our drawing and modeling tabs. And the first thing let's do is let's highlight our model here. We know we've got an inch and a quarter thickness of material. So let's go ahead and right click on the model and go to properties. And let's set our shape height or our model height. Let's set that to one inch. Now, we lose a little bit of detail that way, right? If I come back here to 5.7, We've got some detail right in here, right? And I don't want to lose all of that. I'm willing to give up a little bit of that, but I'm not willing to have a, a six inch tall model. And so we've got to play around with our shape height. Let's try two inches. Okay, that's not bad, right? But we've got to have a two inch piece of material to cut this. Now, whenever you see a model or a shape height, it is calculating that from the highest point in the model. So for example, when I look at the model this way, this is two inches. This isn't two inches. This is two inches. This isn't. This is. So. What we want to do is we'll go ahead and, and keep this at two inches, but that's also going to mean that we're going to have to have a two inch piece of material to cut this out of, right? At least maybe two and a quarter. And so let's go back to my original thought of an inch and a quarter. And again, we gave up a little bit of the detail, but if we use a fine enough bit, we're going to be okay here. And there's a couple ways that we can fix some of this, right? And we're going to use what's called the tilt and the fade options. So if I come back over here to my grayscale image, the white areas or the grayer the area, the taller the model and the, whoops, sorry about that. And the darker, the darker the grayscale image, the lower the model. And so what we want to use is we want to use the tilt and the fade options on this particular uh, model. And so let's come over here to, to our 3D model here and we're going to right click, go to properties, and we've got these two items here, fade and tilt. And it wants us to set anchor points. What I want to do first is, is I want to bring this front wing so that it's taller than, sorry, I'm all over the place here, so that it's taller than the back wing. So we're going to come to our grayscale image and we want to tilt and we're going to set our anchor point at the back, click set, you get a little ruler with a plus sign click and then see that dotted line we're gonna tilt that so that that's the anchor point and we're gonna bring it to here and so see how this became lighter now because it's 10 degrees up and so now it's kind of the same height as our tail so if I come back over to my 3d view you can see here that we have much more height here than we do back here. Now, the fade option works much the same way 
where you fade from a high to a low. So if we come back here to this tail section and see how this is white here and this is black here. So this is much higher than that. But I want to fade that even more. And so I'm going to click on fade. I'm going to set my anchor point right here. And I'm going to fade this from the front to the back. And let's go 62% to kind of exaggerate it. And so if I look at my 3D view here now, and I keep moving the model, I apologize. And now when I look at the model from here, you can see how we've got some thickness here. And then this back here has thinned down because we have faded it from the front to the back. And then we tilted it from the left to the right. And so now if I close the properties dialog and I come over here to do my tool pathing, I can go to set and we can see how thick our model is. So our model thickness is at 1.1788 as its tallest point as we went through and made those adjustments. And I always like to have a sixteenth of an inch or so above the model. So <clears throat> this is our material block, which we know is an inch and a quarter, right? And so the dark area is not machined. The light area is machined. And so I like to leave, depending on how thick my model is, and let me show you this here real quick. If I click cancel there and I come back over here to my drawing tab and I make my material thickness an inch and a half and click OK, and then I come back over here excuse me, to set material. See all the material I have? And so right now it's almost three-eighths of an inch of material above the model. But now when it machines the model, I don't want it to cut all the way through my wood, right? Or whatever I'm machining. And so I want to have most of the material underneath there. And I just want to have a sixteenth of an inch or .0625 of material above the model before it starts cutting the actual model so that I'm sure that I get all of the detail within the model and click OK it's moving my home Z height and then you can do one of two things you can do a roughing or if you have the bits available you can just go straight to the finishing but let's go ahead for the sake of this Let's come back over to our drawing and let's just put a little boundary around the plane. Let's put a vector here, right? And then we'll go ahead and center that vector to the material and then we'll center our model to the material. Then we'll come back over here. We'll do a roughing tool path and we'll use the selected vector as the boundary we won't go past the boundary at all and let's do a 3d raster along X roughing and calculate close and now we'll do our 3d finish again the selected vectors they should still be selected they are and again we're going to use a raster the raster angle will raster in X so it's zero degrees and calculate. If you wanted to raster in Y, you would change that to 90 and it would go up and down in your Y axis. And again, all of this is predicated on your, your XY uh, positioning of your machine. But for my machine, X is left to right, Y is front to back. And so after calculation, we've got our tool paths and let's go ahead and we'll do them one at a time. Let's preview the roughing path. And then we'll preview the finishing path.
And so now I think as you look at that, you kind of get the perspective that we were looking for. We've got higher wingtips in the front. This is tilted up. The detail here, we could probably smooth that out a little bit using some smoothing. But see how the model right here tapers down to the back. Uh, the wheels are up. This one's lower than that one to give you a front you know, left to right, front to back perspective. The front of the uh, engine is higher than the tail of the airplane. And so I think uh, when you look at that, I think you get a perspective that you're looking for. So anyway, I hope that helps. That's the tilt and the fade options in the modeling tab in the properties. Um, if you ever have your model that looks like this, if you double click it, turn it that color, right click it, properties, then you get your component properties. Or you can simply highlight the uh, model, click on the wrench, and then you get those same properties as well. And then let me show you one more thing. If you come over here to your uh, model, and look down here in this lower right hand, not that one, but of, of the Aspire software. And when you hover your cursor, you can see that the Z height of this is 1.4339. The Z height of this is 1.1. The Z height of this is half an inch. So there's about a, a half or 0.6 of an inch uh tilt that we have there and so when you bring models in to aspire as we did with this biplane you may have to do some manipulation to get the model to look the way that you want the model to look now we just did a a quick tilt and fade you could play with this you know you could even get this the little part here uh, the propeller, you could get that to be lower than the wing if you wanted. Um, you could get the wheels to be lower. And again, the smaller tip of bit that you use, the greater the detail. And look, if you've got a four inch piece of wood, then, you know, we sure could have made the the model thicker and bigger and cut it out of a bigger piece of wood. But I think with most of the stuff that most of us will be working on, right, it's typically we're going to be working anywhere from a half an inch thick to to maybe eight quarter or two inches thick. And so we need to be able to machine these models within that workspace. I hope this has helped you. Uh, I really appreciate everybody watching. And this is Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff.